Mm. Welcome back to Theme Park Wizard, and today I'm back with Orange Grove 55, and we're going to discuss the future, 2021, the greatest year on the planet. <laughs> well, it's, 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 we can't go anywhere but up now. After 2020, <laughs> exactly. but up. Man, so we're going to see <laughs> what we're excited for, specifically in Disney parks and Disney in general. So, Chris, where can they find you? Well, thank you for having me on again, Ethan. I appreciate it, buddy. Um, they can find me at Orange Grove 55 on, uh, on YouTube. I do content just like Ethan. Mo I mostly focus, though, on Disney. Um, I do occasional Universal videos, but it's mostly Disney parks. Um, I even dive in a lot to, like, the streaming services and the film and TV stuff. But, uh, yeah, that's where you can find me, YouTube, Orange Grove 55. And if you like Star Wars, that's your guy. I mean, that's yeah. your dude. Yeah, yeah. I also do a lot of videos on Star Wars. I, I love Star Wars. So Now, before we get started, your name was pretty popular this past couple of weeks for a sad reason. The Ron Dominguez, who had the Orange Grove window, he passed away. Do you have any thoughts on Mr. Disneyland, as they call him? Yeah, I mean it's sad. I mean it's really sad because we're 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 losing more and more of of the generation that that worked with Walt, you mm -hmm. know. And um, we now you know we've officially lost all all of the nine old men. A lot of the the, the Imagineers that have worked with Walt are, are 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 passing away, and it's just sad to 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 lose these people that have that direct connection to the man, you know, to Walt mm -hmm. and everything. And um, Ron. Uh, Dominguez paid a, paid a huge contribution to, to the Walt Disney Company, and uh, he will be greatly missed. It's it's really a sad day for Disney fans. Yeah, it's like direct history right there. And then even in modern times, <laughs> I think uh, t today or tomorrow is the official day that Joe Rody retires, and that's, that's so sad because I yeah. thought he was going to work on Tar Tomorrowland. Yeah, yeah, that is sad. And he probably was going to work on our Tomorrowland, but with the whole COVID-19 situation, mm. uh, our Tomorrowland probably took a back burner. Yeah. And it's probably years away now. So he's like, you know what? I I'm just going to retire. I'm, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm over it. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. I'm out of here. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, hopefully, what do you think, Ash, that will do to Animal Kingdom? You know, that's his little baby. So do you think whoever's in charge of Animal Kingdom will bring or like ruin it with <laughs> a more like non-animal based IP or do you think they'll continue like, do you, or do you also do you think Joe Rody will be like Tony Baxter's with the Splash Mountain thing and be like kind of like an advisor still or just be totally gone? Well, I think it would be kind of be a little bit of both. Like, I, I don't think he'll be totally gone. I do think, like, what you mentioned, how he'll be part, like, an advisor. Like, I think Mar Marty Skylar, when he, when he left, he was kind of an advisor as well, if I'm not mistaken. Tony Baxter, same situation. Um, I think Joe Rody will, will, will definitely be that guy where, where, like, this current generation of Imagineers can always, like, reach out if they need mm -hmm. him. Um, in terms of Animal Kingdom, though, yeah, I mean, I think that, like, like, I don't think they're going to ruin it, but it's definitely going to be more of a, like, it's animals, mm -hmm. but it'll be, like, IP animals, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, it'll be Zootopia or things like that. Like, I think the days of, like, non-IP lands and what have you are pretty much gone, at least for the foreseeable future. I think the industry is moving in a really franchise-heavy direction. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Animal Kingdom is definitely going to go in that direction. But the good thing with Disney in terms of IP and animals, they have a huge amount of material to work with. So it's not like they're going to be like, you know, short on material, but if you don't like IP, well, <laughs> I don't know. I think that's, what, that's what the park's going to be. It's going to be all IP dude. And it's going to, it's going to be all that kind of like, you know, whether it be like animals, like cartoony animals, like Zootopia, or whether it be like, maybe like animals, like out of this world, maybe they'll have like a, like a star Wars, area in Animal Kingdom based on the animals, the creatures of the oh, yeah, that'd be planet. Kinda, that'd be kind of cool. I'm out of this world experience. 
Exactly. So we might see stuff like that, but it's definitely all going to be connected to IP. That's for sure. And it's funny because Animal Kingdom had was one of the parts with one of the last original rides, not the last one, the Expedition Everest. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, and yeah, I mean, with it's funny, with weird, with like with Bob Iger, mm -hmm. we haven't really seen original rides. Like with Michael Eisner, I think was better in the sense that he there was more of a balance. You know, he did the IP thing a lot, mm -hmm. but then he would also give us like things that were like original. You know, like the early iteration, whether you love it or hate it. I got to give credit to California Adventure. I mean, they, it really wasn't, you know, they didn't like lean on the, the franchises, you know? Oh yeah, that was definitely original. <laughs> it was definitely original. And then, and then like with the new Tomorrowland, they didn't lean on the franchises. We got things like the Rocket Rods and things like mm -hmm. that. So Michael Eisner definitely took risks, you know, and definitely had mm -hmm. things that weren't connected to a franchise. Bob Iger, he, I mean, all that went out the window with Bob Iger. I mean, he really focused on the branding really heavily heavily focused on that mm -hmm. i guess yeah that makes sense because he bought up all the companies so he's like now let's put them right in the parks <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> exactly man so let's see here so for 2021 what i guess there's not too much if you're speaking of just disneyland there's not too much for what <laughs> new lands or rides are you most excited for this year <laughs> well, yeah, like you said, only has two, uh, only really two options, but still, you cannot be excited for any. So who knows? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, with, with Disneyland, are we? It's slim pickings for sure. I mean, uh, but I, I'm, I'm personally, I've always been like a huge California Adventure person. I love to watch this park grow and evolve. Mm -hmm. I love it. Disneyland's already like the A plus student, so when it gets something new, it's kind of like it's kind of like yeah, okay, cool. But DCA, it was it's been really fun over the years watching this park grow and get better. And I'm so I'm I'm the most excited for Avengers Campus because yeah, the rides and everything that's cool. But I really I'm really excited to see how this land sort of fits and meshes with the rest of the park, mm -hmm. the sight lines, how it looks. I'm I'm really excited for that. I think it's gonna be really really interesting. Yeah, and I know when things are all good, then they have those all those impressive shows, um, which is cool. I still think hopefully they have the the Spider Man robot because that doesn't require any touching of anybody. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the, the robot can't spread COVID, so that's a good thing. Yeah. Or can it? Or can it? I don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> is it is it cool? like a Superman virus? Where now when they can like, grow through robots, that would be quite scary. <laughs> we, we better, we better, <laughs> we better have Doctor Fauci to make sure. You know, no, but uh, Doctor Fauci approved. Right, <laughs> but in all seriousness, like um. Yeah, the, the, the Spider-Man animatronic is going to be super awesome. I'm really curious, and, and this came to my head like last night, actually. Because, you know, the, all this talk about Spider-Man 3 and like the Spider-Verse or the multiverse with Spider-Man mm -hmm. bringing back Tobey Maguire and oh, bringing yeah. back Andrew Garfield. I wonder if, if that movie really takes off, which I'm sure it will. I'm sure it's going to be mm -hmm. go freaking bonkers at the box office, but... If it really takes off, I wonder if Disney's going to go that route with the attraction. Are they going to like, because they love to like, especially here in Anaheim, they love to kind of like make things new and fresh. We've seen it with Mission Breakout. Mm -hmm. Can they alter the Spider-Man web slingers and create a multiverse, a Spider-Verse version of that to kind of promote the new movie? If they do that, that's pretty dope. That's that pretty awesome. Really, really cool. I like that idea. So much so that I think the line would wrap all the way to Disneyland. It would. It would be really, really cool. I hope there is that capability within web, web Slingers to do those kind of additions or whatever enhancements. Because I think that would be really, really awesome to be able to kind of evolve as Spider-Man. Because Spy they're going to be making Spider-Man movies for ever they've been making Spider-Man movies like the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies were like in like 2003. You know. Yeah. I mean, 
they've been doing these forever. So can imagine like in 15 years from now, the new Spider-Man, whoever that might be in 15 or 20 years, it'd be kind of cool if this attraction was, was able to evolve and accommodate these new Spider-Mans. I think it'd be pretty awesome. Yeah, that would be, yeah, just also keep it fresh. And then, uh, yeah, it wouldn't get old. And then, yeah, we would go start. And I feel like as long as your screens and well, audio, they can do it because all they have to do is get them to record some audio and then change the screen. Or not even really change the screen if they don't take off the mask. So I feel like it's very possible. Yeah, Multiverse definitely. spider bot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We got we got Doctor Strange across the way, right? With that <laughs> yeah. Doctor Strange show. It's all connected. We got the multiverse. We're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> now all we need is Scarlet Witch to come on in here. Yes. Yes, please. Character. Oh, man. I, yeah, and that's like, honestly, that's one of my favorite characters in the MCU. I absolutely love Scarlet Witch. I think Elizabeth Olsen has done an incredible job with that character i would love to see with wandavision coming out come on Disney, mm-hmm. get on that yes please but- two weeks <laughs> <laughs> man which brings to the next question what shows what theme park shows are you most excited for to potentially return this year um you know i've always been a sucker for I've always been a sucker for, for the fireworks and for Fantasmic. Um, Fantasmic actually, I mean, I remember like as a young kid, I, I absolutely loved that show. Mm-hmm. And I, I really would be excited to see that come back. I really want to watch it again. Um, the fireworks are also very special. Um, I, I love standing on Main Street and just watching everything erupt and, and the music. It's just, mm-hmm. especially with when they do like these, um, like Disneyland Forever. You know, mm-hmm. and and they gave me that really awesome shout out in the beginning with the Orange Grove. I thought that was really <laughs> nice. <of Disney. laughs> that was your show. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was super nice of them to do that, and I appreciate it. No, no. but in all, all seriousness, I, I love I love these shows. I love the fireworks show, fireworks shows. I would love to see them return. It just for me that that's like the it's really like the heart of Disneyland. You know, that's when the magic mm-hmm. really happens when the park just kind of erupts magic happens magic happens (laughs) copyright (laughs) (laughs) but yeah uh, and also the projection mapping you know recently they had the projection mapping to the fireworks shows i love how they added that it really enhances the experience in fact i was telling my mom who hasn't been uh, well anywhere in a long time (laughs) Her last Disney parade, because she hates crowds, so she, like, avoids theme parks like the plague. But she really liked the Main Street Electrical Parade. That's the last time she actually ever, like, went there. Well, no, when I was two. But, like, last time she actually went and enjoyed it was the Main Street Electrical Parade. I'm like, wow, you have to go back at least one more time. There's so many cool new shows with the technology. And I was telling her. And she's like, because she's like, she, I'm not the biggest fireworks fan. Let's just like show, show. And then she's like, whoa, that sounds interesting. So hopefully she'll go back. Oh, I can drag her back to see like <laughs> the brand new show. Yeah, you got to bring her back. You know, and it, it, it's funny you mentioned that. My, my grandma was a huge Main Street Electrical Parade um, person as well. She absolutely loved that parade. And she, my grandma was funny. Like she would always like kind of like give my dad like side eye and be like hey how, how come you can't like do stuff like this for like the holidays on our, on our house you know with the christmas light <laughs> uh, you know, i was like oh man I'm putting the pressure on you know did he ever cave in no he never he never came through oh man never Terrible. came through. come on step it up step it up <laughs> wow but yeah i'm most excited for yeah, the fireworks. I'm still miss even before this paint the night. Oh, where did it go? It needs to come back. And I, you know, as you know, I haven't fully seen the world of color, so I definitely got to take advantage of that when the park reopens. That still blows my mind that you haven't <laughs> seen, <laughs> that really seen world of color. I'm gonna go into Disney jail if I can't don't see this immediately. So I have to go see it. <laughs> oh man, it's great, dude! World of Color is really awesome, and I the thing I love about World of Color is Steve Davidson did a brilliant job at like taking the 
the the show mm-hmm. you know which was which, the wonderful world of color which mm-hmm. was sort of like at the beginning of like color television mm-hmm. and turning that into a water fountain light show and it was really like you know you never really really would have thought of that but it was really when he suggested it and when he brought up that concept it really did make a lot of sense you know because mm-hmm. this show is all about the color right mm-hmm. and so it really made sense to like take this this ip of the wonderful world of color and bring it into the into the lagoon it was just a brilliant concept i mean when you watch it in person it's never the same in, on video when you watch it in person it's gonna oh, blow yeah, your yeah. mind yeah. it's gonna yeah. blow your mind then the fountains go super high and the lights and the music yeah. it's just ooh, you'll love it yeah. you'll love i it. love the incorporate you know the credit coaster and the Pixar pal around that they incorporate those LED lights, which is pretty cool. It's like one big stage. It's like one big, you know, canvas right there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it creates a perfect backdrop for the show. It really is something special. I think you're, I think you're gonna love it. I really do. Gosh, open up so I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, um, but fantastic too. I, I like that. One. I. <laughs> I just wish that, I mean, nothing with the show itself, but you know, during those busy days, like really busy summer days when like Pirates has like an hour wait time, then Fantasmic starts, it gets really crowded there. Like even before like all this, it was just really hard to walk. So I, I wish, I mean, I know Disneyland's old and Fantasm is kind of just there, but man, I wish there's like a, like a prop, like a Disney World have, have, that, have that stadium seating. I wish they had like there's some kind of proper seating area because it gets really crowded um, at especially the, during the first showing of Phantasm. The second one's not too crowded. The first one, if it's like in you know, all those really wall to wall days, so crowded. I feel like it's so it's kind of uncomfortable to like watch the show. You know, it, it is. I think I think I agree with you that like logistically, it's a mess and like comfort wise, it's not really comfortable because you're sitting on the, on the cobblestone on the mm-hmm. floor. But I think in terms of the show itself, I think our Fantasmic works a lot better because I think mm-hmm. part of the magic of Fantasmic is that it's not in an auditorium. It's that this, this, this cool thing kind of takes place in the park. It kind mm-hmm. of erupts out of nothing. It, it, like the, the same island, Tom Shore Island, that you, that you went during the day. The I same island square. It just kind of mm-hmm. blows up into this yeah. weird it's kind of awesome like that you know it's kind of organic we're like florida with the stage and the bleachers it's a show it loses oh, yeah, a yeah, bit like of the a, magic you know like a scheduled show where it's like a yeah this phantasm that was like a cavalcade where it's kind of it just appeared yeah it's a wow. boom you know and mickey comes out and it's like it's so organic like it's really happening you know in the park <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah like you're really in new orleans and voila Boom. A show pops. I'm like, yeah, yeah, it is it is definitely definitely feels much more, you know, organic than like, yeah, the SeaWorld. I mean not SeaWorld, but yeah, it was like SeaWorld at the with the stage because it almost like you're on the Shamu when you're seeing it in Florida. <laughs> Whereas yeah, you're just walking along on a show. But even that's funny, the world of color is kind of is like that too, because there's separate, there's waiting areas, but you can like walk. There's still a pathway. You can walk when the show is going on. So it's yeah. kind of organic-ish as well. It is. Yeah, World of Color is very organic. And I don't know, like they, they had a cool, I don't know if you've seen it online. You'll, they'll probably never have it in person again, but they had what they called a Tron core. It was like- Oh, I saw that. Isn't that awesome? I was like, whoa, I watched that like, 50 times i'm like that's the coolest thing i've ever seen too bad i can see it in person <laughs> <laughs> wow yeah it was like when there's a <sighs> yeah it was incredible if they ever do another tron movie and they do that i mean I, I i hope i hope you get a chance to see it in person i hope they do a tron thing again in the lagoon because it would be pretty odd i mean i it was really amazing yeah i, I feel like they should make another tron movie just to show that thing <laughs> yeah yeah did you ever go to Ele- electronica back in the day or no hmm, i did not was that a california adventure or disneyland that was a california adventure and it was kind of like a um the California adventure went when they premiered world of color they were doing a lot of these like dance parties 
these like alcohol fueled dance parties <laughs> and, and electronica was one of the iterations of those dance parties i think it came out in like 2010 if i'm not mistaken correct me in the comments if i'm wrong on the date but um i'll send you a video actually i'll send you a video. you can kind of check it out but they but it was all in hollywood land and the entry plaza and it would be all these projections of tron they play the tron music you can go and get a drink it was like food and wine festival but like at night with all tron projections it was dope interesting yeah see tron i don't know why the movie sometimes don't do well but it's a pretty cool property that is tron's a very cool property you know and and like disney if you're listening bob Iger, if you're watching bring us the tron coaster to disney yes i know you got two extra ones in there bring it over bring, bring it, it over because <laughs> yeah even that's just a really cool it makes a really pretty coaster like wow i, I always kind of watch the shanghai one I'm like that looks so nice. I know. And then I hear a lot of haters are like, oh, Disneyland, it's too small. You can't build it there. You know what? Look, this is a man. <laughs> our company was found, Disney was founded on, on from a man, Walt Disney, who thought like doing the impossible was kind of fun. He always wanted mm. a challenge. You know what? If we could put a man on the moon, if we can do all these cool things, we can put Tron in Disneyland. It can work. They can work it out. They can change it the out. I bet you those same people <laughs> probably said the Mickey and Minnie's Runway Railway, Railway wouldn't fit in Toontown. And now look. Exactly. What do you have to say now? The yeah. Length of that Toontown over here. So. Yeah, exactly. This, those same people would be saying, if you would have said 10 years ago they were going to build a 14-acre Star Wars land behind the Rivers of America, they would say, you're crazy. There's no <laughs> room. They got, they got the backstage areas. You can't fit it. Well, here we are. Exactly. Yeah, see, so... <laughs> While Disney World over there is losing, that's so funny to me. They lost the great movie ride for Mickey's, but we lose nothing except yeah. the entertainment building. Right, yeah, we, we lose the gag factory, you know, which yeah. is a cool store, but I'm sure they'll replace it with another store, so we're not really losing anything. And even Star Wars Land, we didn't yeah, really we didn't lose anything. Nothing. Yeah, we just went to a backstage and Big Thunder Ranch. But yeah, that's, that's hilarious for the... For the place that's restricted on space, <laughs> funny how we uh, we get uh, <laughs> nothing's taken away from us. Ha ha! Disney World. We 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 stay winning. We stay winning. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. And now it allows the Hollywood backlot to still be a blank canvas for whatever they want to do with it. Which is yeah. What do you think about that, by the way? What do you think is going to happen with that? It needs to be Marvel or what? Oh, Hollywood backlot. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Huh, yeah, I don't know. I'm just sad that what did uh, what did the Patrick Finnegan say? Eight hundred million dollars were was dedicated to that. God, I'm sad that probably got chopped in the third. <laughs> but <laughs> but let's see. What could they do? Yeah, I like that. Hmm. Maybe they can do like. Because, you know, I like that, you know, the new marquee and the Sunset Showcase Theater that they put out there. Like, if they can just revamp entire Hollywood land and even the back lot to, like, some cool, like, really classic 1920s Hollywood, like, you know, an extension of Buena Vista Street, that would be super cool with some, uh, I was going to say maybe a Roger Rabbit ride, but they have one already. But I'm trying to think, what? Um, they, they can dig down and find some IP to go into Hollywood. You know, you're right. Maybe it could even be Marvel. But, like you said, this can be like Marvel maybe like on Earth. Like how you, I remember you gave the idea one time of theming it. It's like a generic New York land or something or and just have Marvel characters, you know, because they live there. You know, so maybe like a Hollywood, classic Hollywood, like with Marvel characters. Yeah, I mean, that, that would work because you can do, like, let's say, like, okay, so Buena Vista Street mm -hmm. is like 1930s Hollywood. Well, mm -hmm. it, let's, if you make Hollywood land, let's say you make it 1940s Hollywood, mm -hmm. then you can take Captain America because Captain America, mm -hmm. I think the first movie, if I'm not mistaken, it's been a while since I've seen it, but takes place in the 1940s. You can, yeah. you can do a Captain America ride based in the 40s, mm -hmm. you know, 
and even Captain Marvel, that was in a lot of films in Los Angeles, and that was before Captain America. So right. She can live it. And if you think to have two, they can have the current Hollywood land main stretch, Hollywood Boulevard, then if you take the back lot to two main rides, one being the Captain America and Captain Marvel, which both have meet and greets there anyway, then voila, you can, that's perfect. You can make a 19 Hollywood backlot theme to Marvel characters who lived there in that time period. Boom. I should be an imagine here. <laughs> well, you know, there's a spot available. Joe Brady's a <laughs> Like, that would be super cool. Then you can use stage 17 and all those empty buildings. And, and you can even put, like, a, just a dark ride that fits in there. And then, or, and then, like, a roller coaster. And then, voila. Boom. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they have a lot of potential. They have, they, like you said, they really do have a blank canvas for Hollywood. They can do a lot. They can absolutely do a lot. My, my initial thing was I really wanted them to build Runaway Railway in Hollywood land because I felt like, not that I don't think that it fits in Toontown. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I think Runaway Railway fits perfectly in the Mickey's Toontown. But I think it also would have fit into Hollywood land. I mean, I mean, they, they built it in, in Hollywood studios in Florida. So obviously the Hollywood theme works. They could do it out here. I, I just feel like even though it fits in Toontown, I think DCA needs that kind of ride more. Mm-hmm. I would have yeah, liked to have seen that. A big family e-ticket attraction type. Exactly. There's not a whole lot of those. I mean, we have Little Mermaid, but Radiator Springs Racers is kind of that ride, but it's a little intense. There are some people that don't mm-hmm. like that kind of and speed. And it has a, a height requirement, whereas Mickey's does not. Exactly. Exactly. So it would have been kind of cool, but I mean, I want to see, yeah, that Hollywood backlight, you can put so much there. You can put a cool dark ride. You can, like what we mentioned, you can add some Marvel attractions. There's a lot of potential. That's the future, I think, of DCA in, for the next 10 years, I think, is that backlot area. Yeah, because it's so, if you do that and then if you take the original, uh, <laughs> um, like you mentioned, <laughs> with your collab with a Disney Family Man 23, if you uh, if Disney is able to buy up some of that stuff on Harbor Boulevard, do the Eastern Gateway, or if they just do the original Eastern Gateway as proposed, hopefully the businesses won't be backlashing again after yeah. what's happening right now. Then they can have that whole extra bus area. That's like I don't know how many acres that is, but it's a pretty sizable chunk of land right there. Yeah, yeah, it's a big chunk of land. And and in terms of the, the the neighboring businesses, I think after COVID and after all these shutdowns, I, I mean, I think the businesses are like, you know what, Disney's not so bad after all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I really do think that. I think they're like, oh, you know what, hey, yeah, we'll work it out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're like, mm, you know, I don't think I'm pretty sure I'll take a bridge, maybe impacting my business rather than a not being able to open at all over here. Like, wow, can you imagine just a few years ago they were fighting over a bridge and patching their businesses? <laughs> right. Look at it now. Look at it now. They were fighting over a bridge a few years ago, then the data and science hit, and now they got <laughs> nothing. <laughs> yeah, now, they have a, now they're fighting over something much smaller than a little br- a bridge. Oh, boy. Yeah, it's sad. It really is sad. My, my heart does, in all seriousness, my heart goes out to all the businesses and the, especially, I, I like, look, McDonald's, IHOP, they're huge companies. They're, I mean, it's like, Disney. <laughs> McDonald's is like Disney. I mean, it, it, it'll survive, you know? Yeah. But, but like the smaller, the mom and pop stuff, the like liquor Captain store. Kids. Captain Kid, you know, the liquor stores, the, 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 the little souvenir shops and things like that, that, that aren't mega corporations. That's who I feel for because those are, the, those, those are the, the businesses that I think, you know, unfortunately might not come back, you know? Yeah, that's um, very unfortunate. And there's, I was driving yesterday or two days ago, and that no, was yesterday, and then there was a, there's some kind of hotel that looks like a lodge in the back of like California Adventure. I don't know if you know what it is, but it's like 
two stories and there's like fake snow on the top of the roofs and it looks like a cabin or something. I'm like, oh what? yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I don't know the name offhand, but I've seen it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I didn't even know it was there, but I wonder if that will survive. That's, it uh, seems already hidden in the first place. It, now it's doubly hard to. <laughs> well, wow. well, do you uh, think? Now, I want to ask you, Ethan, because I'm really curious on your thoughts on this. Do you think because of the pandemic, and because that all these smaller businesses are having trouble now, right? Obviously, mm -hmm. you you think that like a year ago they might have said, "No, we're not going to sell to Disney. We don't want to sell mm -hmm. our business." But now, with everything going on, do you think more of these businesses in the area on Catella, on Harbor, are more willing to sell it to Disney? because of the economic situation yeah you know i think they will i think they would be especially because <laughs> you don't know how long it'll take you know to once they do open to recover you know to get to where whatever profit they're making before so i feel like if disney just one at a time gives them a nice chunk of cash even if it's at a discount than what it wouldn't been like two years ago it would be like mm, i can't refuse this offer you know, my employees are like financially struggling. I'm struggling. So let's take this $5 million, $10 million, and let's, I don't know, invest in something. Yeah, I feel like they'd be more willing to take it. And if not, maybe not all of them, but at least some of them will be. And, you know, once they say, you know, they say the domino, once the dom one domino falls, the rest of them start falling. Yeah, exactly. I can definitely see that happening where like th some of them might be holdouts where they're like, no, I'm not selling no matter what. And I understand that. But I think there will be more businesses in the area that are more willing to sell now. And Disney, if they have the money to do it, they should definitely jump on that because eventually Disney is going to want to expand. Eventually mm -hmm. Disney is going to want to have a third park. And in order to do that, you need land. You know, we're not mm -hmm. Florida. We don't have the blessing of size. So mm -hmm. we need that land. So perfect opportunity right now to snatch a lot of that stuff up. Again, it sucks. I, I feel sorry for the, the business owners that are having to even go through this. But the reality is the reality. And if Disney wants to grab up more land in the area, that's the way to do it. You know, unfortunately, $600 stimulus isn't going to save a lot of these places and yeah. they're, they're going to have to do something you know i mean you know 600 bucks isn't that much which that's not for the video i mean it's but it's a disgrace that we only got 600 bucks but whatever yeah, it's, terrible. <laughs> it's terrible but yeah i mean that's the reality and i think that you know the, the these businesses are probably looking hey look if disney comes to come to them and says hey yeah like you said hey you know what we're gonna give you five million bucks sell your liquor store to us where we can have the land I mean, you know, during the pandemic when you're not making any money, yeah, why not, dude? Now, if I was like some one of those mom and pop places, let's say I don't know, Captain Kids or something, I try to strike a deal that no matter how far in the future, let's say I don't know they put a hotel there or something. I, if I was Captain Kids, I'd be like, as part, I'll sell it to you, but only if you let me open up on the ground floor of your new hotel or something like that. You know, some kind of strike, like some kind of deal so they can kind of, you know, make like a nice little combo, like a compromise, like here, you can do this, but here also, but let me have at least first dibs of trying to open up or reopen if I wanted to and on the ground floor of uh, yeah. you know, your hotel or whatever they do. Man. That makes sense. That makes absolute sense. That, 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 that would be fair. You know, I, I could, you know, like if I was Disney, I would jump on that. Yeah, absolutely. Why not? You know? Yeah. Because for the carousel in, they already got that one. I'm surprised no more. They didn't, uh, no one else wanted to sell after they got the carousel in thing. But uh, I don't know. That could be a quick domino to fall. <laughs> yeah i mean they have the room between the toy story lot and i think the opportunities that will arise with various businesses in the area after the pandemic disney has enough space i think to proceed with a third park now with the pandemic and with the economic situation will they do that anytime soon probably not but in 20 years maybe maybe in 20 years we'll have a third park you know maybe we'll have westcott or oh, some yes. other thing, you know yeah or or california disney sea 
Yes, let's do that one. Exactly. And, yes. have, and have Oriental Land Company run the whole thing and build yeah, it. Yeah, I was like, get out of here. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'll, I'll build up. You guys, you guys take care of all the good stuff because you obviously know what you're doing. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm going to take a step back. I'm going to focus on these two. And this is your, this is your little baby right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, the, the OLC, they, they definitely know what they're doing. You know, they definitely know what they're doing. They, they, they have been kicking ass for a long time. The new Being the Beast area is gorgeous at, at mm. Tokyo Disney. You know, obviously Disney Sea is awesome. They do amazing stuff over there. And, and you know what? And also, I want to also give a shout out to Japanese Disney fans. I follow yeah, a lot please. of these. Yes, I follow a lot yeah. of these these Japanese fan accounts or whatever on 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 Twitter. Mm -hmm. And the the cosplay and all the passion behind a lot of these. It's so awesome to see that. You know, it's really oh, yeah, really they go cool. all out over there. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty awesome, dude. I, I I love it. I love it, man. You know what? As a matter of fact, because California sucks so bad right now, I'm gonna move to Japan. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've always wanted to go visit Tokyo. Now I have a place to stay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's move to Japan, Ethan. We'll we'll room together, man. Like, that's great. And then you know, yeah, because also the same on that same topic that Universal people, at Universal Japan. They do the same thing. They go like all out for like Harry Potter and like new uh, Nintendo stuff. I'm like, what? You see, I've seen pictures of people just fully dressed up as Mario and Luigi and <laughs> Peach. I'm like, wow, look at them go. It's like they're walk around characters, but the, it's almost hard to tell the difference between the two. Uh, no, it's incredible. Like I've seen, I've seen Japanese cosplayers like, um, like, like, like do Elsa because I know Japan they love Frozen and stuff mm. and I see a lot of Elsa cosplay and the the Japanese Elsa cosplayers like they look more like Elsa more legit than a lot of like the official you know like they <laughs> yeah. look wow like that's Elsa right there you know I mean it's, mm. it's incredible Incredible! The costuming, the details, everything they put into that—it's really impressive. You know, it's really, really cool. See, Disney you should hire them for your walk-around character. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Let's <laughs> see. So, um, so will you be attending? Because you know, I know last year, you know, that Disney is really starting or Disneyland starting in those after-hours events that have like one, it's like once a month. It seems like that. <laughs> On um, my birthday, it was at April 30th, there was supposed, or April, around that time, there's supposed to be a Star Wars night that said postponed. Will you be attending more of these after-hour events when the park, re when they start having them again? Like the Star Wars night and the Sweethearts night and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I probably would. I mean, I, I have nothing against those after-hours things. They're completely optional. Um... I actually, I'm, I'm still kicking myself for not attending the, I think it was the 80s or the 90s. I forget what oh, night yeah, it was. Oh, yeah, the 80s one? Yeah. The 80s one with the Disney afternoon fireworks. I mean, yeah. that was insanely cool. I, I, I'm still kicking myself for not going to that. So, yeah, I'm open to it. I definitely want to try one of those after hours things. You know, I haven't really, I haven't done them. I haven't done them yet. So, yeah, I, I, I really want to do that. Yeah, I haven't been either. So, I definitely want to. I'll try one, especially you know. Then it's, it's those are limited capacity, so then you get like no, barely any lines for anything. So that's pretty nice. That's a pretty cool experience. And then that's all themed. So like the Star Wars one would be pretty cool. I'm excited for that one. I feel like that would be sold out in ten seconds. But if I can get one, that, <laughs> then that'd be pretty exciting. Yeah, I yeah. still haven't been on Rise of the Resistance. Oh, so sorry. Oh, man. Yeah. Well, they, it was only open for a month. You know? Yeah. Gosh, I'm going to have to fly to Orlando to get on this thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my, my actually, my sister's out there right now in Florida. What? Oh, that's like the 21st I know uh, that's out that went to Florida in the last two months. Oh, you know, Florida's probably very happy we're closed. <laughs> they're like ooh, all these california people are spending money here and the airlines that fly to florida are very probably pretty happy too <laughs> well yeah and, and that's the thing and not to get too like too 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 deep into like the political ramifications but th that's why i think a lot of the, sh the lockdown 
stuff that we're doing in California doesn't really, really make a difference because mm-hmm. people find a way, you know, mm-hmm. Florida, life finds a way, life <laughs> finds a way, you know, like, like Florida is open for business. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and California is not. So mm-hmm. what are people doing? Well, they're just jumping on a plane and going to Florida. So, and then they're coming back to California. <laughs> it's like, so it's like, what good is it? What good is locking down and having all this stuff? If the people are just going to like, be like, you know, screw it. I'm gonna fly to Florida and come back. You know, it doesn't make yeah. it really much of a difference, you know? And, and that's why I think it's all kind of silly. I think they really need to step back and look at what they're doing to mitigate the virus because this isn't working out obviously. And our cases here in California are through the roof. And, 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 we're under, and we're under like house arrest and we're, we still have through the roof cases. Yeah. Meanwhile, in Nevada, where my father lives, they've actually had cases go down over the past two weeks and everything there is open to 25%, which is very interesting. Wow. I must say, this is out of all the years, um, I've never seen so many people that I personally like know say that they go to went to florida i'm like wow everyone's going to florida now so obviously a direct effect on this thing newsome <laughs> yes exactly 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 <laughs> and if you want to sign the recall link up above no just kidding <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's very mm, yeah because i'm like even my friend who uh <laughs> used to work with me at the uh, Albertsons, my first job way back a few years ago, <laughs> we're still friends, and he goes to Disneyland all the time. He has, uh, and his, oh, his, I forgot the name, but <laughs> his friends <laughs> also have their own YouTube channel. They do Disney stuff. I forgot the name, though. When I find it, I'll link it down below. But then, but they, I guess they, yeah, they all went to the Magic Kingdom on December 12th. I'm like, oh, wow, that's nice. You didn't invite me. So sad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, you know what? You've been to Florida, right? You've been there before? Yeah. I've yeah. never been. I've never been. I want to go so bad. I told my sister because it's it's like oh, my yeah, sister. Oh, yeah, why don't she take you? I know. Well, the <laughs> thing is, is like, I, 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 yeah, it sucks. She would have taken me. The, the only problem is, is like my work schedule and everything. Mm-hmm. Like I have to ask like months and months and months and months in advance for a day off and for to have a whole week is even harder. So I told her yeah. next time you go, you're bringing me with you. I want to go to Epcot. I want to go to Animal Kingdom. I want to go to all this stuff, you know? Yeah. Wow. You know, um, Animal Kingdom, that's still my favorite. My goodness, that place, I haven't been to Pandora, but woo, that place is beautiful. It's like you're stepping into a jungle or something. It's like, it's like you're not even on in Florida or it's like you're not even like in this country. You'll love it. You'll absolutely love it. Especially if you like animals. But even if you don't, you'll still like Animal Kingdom. Yeah, well, the thing, I, the, the, my favorite parts of uh, of Disney, of, of Imagineering, are, are when they create these really, like, natural environments, you know, like, I love Adventureland, you know, I love that area, and I love, like, um, like Grizzly Peak and things like that, so, it, so Animal Kingdom seems like it would be right up my alley, an entire park that's kind of like that natural vibe. Mm-hmm. I'm down for it. And Epcot also is another part that I'm really curious about. Um, I don't know, though, if I wanted to go now for to Epcot because all dug up with the construction. I might wait, <laughs> yeah. a couple, might wait a couple of years for them to finish that up. But I really want to check out Epcot, too. Magic Kingdom, I'm the least interested in. And, and, and MGM st- or in, in, uh, Hollywood Studios because I feel like Magic Kingdom is like a lesser Disneyland mm-hmm. and even Hollywood Studios. I feel like our DCA is even better than that. So those two parts <laughs> are kind of like whatever, but Animal Kingdom and Epcot look dope. I want to see those two. <laughs> yeah, they seem like, they did seem to import a lot of the Hollywood Studios rides into our Hollywood land in California Adventure, which is kind of funny. Yeah. It sounds like they're like, hmm, what do I put here? I almost caught Hollywood land and we have a whole park themed to Hollywood. Let's just take those and put them over here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but, but, at least, but the thing about DCA though that I love is that we have, could, because it's not just Hollywood, mm-hmm. it, it's based on the like, state. So we have yeah. like, 
we have a pier with a body of water. We have the Grizzly Peak, which is more natural, kind of campy, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's not like a one one trick pony, so to speak. Yeah, like the so Hollywood unique. Studios is just studios. Mm-hmm. It's just studio buildings in Hollywood. I just feel it's kind of like redundant compared to like DCA. We have mm-hmm. more variety, you know? Yeah, I feel like DCA is like a mix of Hollywood Studios and Epcot. Because there's you know a lot of the festivals are there too, so it's like a mix and mash of those, and then its own particular thing too. It's like three yeah. parks in one. Exactly, exactly. Like no other th- Disney park is a pier. That's actually when you think about it, that's actually pretty cool. No other Disney park has a Ferris wheel, nor does it have a pier. Even though I hate the Ferris wheel, it still looks great. And it no other thing cool. has a pier. Like that's cool. It is cool. It is cool. And for, and from what I understand, actually, I think that the whole Paradise Pier concept um, started with the, with the Disney's America Park that they were going to build in Virginia in the, like the 90s. Um, they were going to build a whole pier area because the whole park was kind of based around California. I mean, not California. The whole park for Virginia was based around like America, you know? <laughs> like, uh... and, yeah, and so they wanted to have like a pure section, and I think when they when they canned or or canceled that those plans, that part of it tr- went to California Adventure. Ah, just another example of ideas never truly going away. Yeah, ideas never die. Like wow. So how often? Since it's been how long? When's the last time you went to Disneyland? Like, did you go like just before it closed, like February, March ish? Yeah, last time I've been was February, so it's been almost a year. Ooh, um, yeah. It's been a long time. I haven't even been in Downtown Disney yet. It's been a long time. Yeah, it's been so, almost a year. Almost they, a year. When they reopen, how do you think you'll go more? At least for the first year, more frequently than you did than the past couple years. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, me too. I I, 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 I appreciate it more by now. myself. Oh yeah, I've been you know what, Ethan, I've been by myself and I have no problem with that. I mean, I love don't get me wrong. I love going with with family, my girlfriend, friends. I love that. But there's something about going by yourself when you can just kind of walk around and kind of like absorb the atmosphere on your own and do your own thing. It's a unique experience. Have you ever been by yourself? Kind of. It was when I was working on the college program and I arrived there a couple hours early to <laughs> avoid the traffic. So then I went on Splash. I walked down and I went on Splash Mountain. Then I went to my dressing room and changed. But it wasn't like a true, like, I, by myself, like, all day or multiple hours type thing. But it was kind of cool being there by myself for that one time because I was like, you know, I can go on whatever I want. I didn't have to, like, debate or anything and just oh i want to go on splash round so i'm gonna walk over there and go and then i'm gonna go to work like it was that, that kind of that part of it's pretty cool yeah like a couple of years ago i went by myself i just took the trip out there and uh well, actually it was funny because i actually went with my mom but my mom had like a meeting or something out in orange county so mm-hmm. i'm like drop you off Okay. Yeah, yeah. I said, you know, I'll take the ride with you and then I'll I'll hit up Disneyland and you can do your meeting and then just come pick me up when you're done. You know? Nice. Cool. And I went and I, I I it was great. I went to Trader Sam's, I got a couple a couple of drinks, I went over to Disneyland, you know, I did the rides I wanted to do. It was a lot of fun. It was it was kind of a cool experience. It was just a few hours, mm-hmm. but it was just kind of interesting to have that like that whole experience where you're just kind of like it's just you and the park. It's kind of, mm-hmm. it's kind of cool. I must say, if I lived close to like maybe like within twenty minutes, I'd probably be going. I'd probably go by myself a lot more because you know just because the fact that I'm so, I'd be so close. I can like especially you know some people that live in walking distance. Like if I can walk there, I'd definitely be there probably like every weekend by myself because that's with the Universal. I'm like twenty minutes away, so yeah. that's why usually every week I'm there, usually by myself, filming a video, but then also riding a ride or two. And, because you have, usually have short lines if, if you go during the week. So it's, it is kind of cool by yourself. It's a very unique experience. 
Yeah, it's pretty awesome. And I'm in the same boat as you. Like we live, we actually live pretty close together. So I'm in the same boat as you. Like we're both about an hour-ish away from yeah. the park. So it's, it's like technically it's, yeah, it's local, but it's still like a track getting down there. <laughs> yeah, especially in normal like, traffic times. Oh. Yeah, it's hard, you know. Like, it, like before the pandemic, when, it was, when the park was open, I, I would average like once a month. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll be like me about once a month, and people be like, "Man, that's not a lot." But I'm like, you know, time flies by over here. You, I, I go there, and all of a sudden, it's been like, oh, three weeks where I'm already here. Uh, three weeks passed, and so it's like, once a month is pretty, pretty, pretty good amount of time. It can still pay for your pass as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, once a month is cool. Like, I'm fine with once a month. I would prefer to go more. I, like, you, like you, I would love to live in Orange County and be able to go every other weekend or whatever. But once a month, I'm fine with that. I mean, that, that, that's enough for me to get my fix, to go, enjoy the day, and I'll come back next month. I'm totally cool with that, you know? Yeah, definitely. And Oh, as for the next question, it was any Walt Disney World plans. We kind of touched up upon that. You had the chance, or potentially had the chance to go, but uh, your work schedule. So, uh, will, yeah. will there be a time where you, a uh, year where you like actually plan like a Walt Disney World trip? Yeah, yeah. Well, I've been talking to my sister because she went like she's actually still there, but we've been talking about it. And I really want to go like the whole family. I want to go mm-hmm. and we, all of us just go down to Florida and just kind of like, you know, do our thing. And, um, but I want to wait though. I mean, I want to plan it, but I want to wait until Epcot's a little bit less of a construction site. Mm-hmm. And then, like um, 2022, 2023 ish, the 40th anniversary is hopefully it'll be all done. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because it would be my first time, so I really want to go. Right, and I'll be greeted with a construction wall. Exactly. <laughs> I want to go in. There's a little bit more of like the park, and not just a bunch of walls. So, like in a, like a year or so, I'll, I'll probably try to try to shoot for that. Look, you know, look, I don't have to go to Walt Disney World all the time. I I just want to make it down there at least once and check mm-hmm. it out once. You know, just, you at least meet up with time. George and we can all have a grand old time. Yeah, Disney Family Man, Disney Family Man. <laughs> oh yes, the Disney Family Man who's going to be moving to around around that area. I think what this coming summer uh yeah, I think he said like summer. Like I think he I think it's like a little bit of ways, but uh coming up Place to stay. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. We don't have to get a hotel. We stay at Disney Family Man's house. Yeah, party at the Family Man. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you excited for, because I know you say most have Avengers Campus, but are you excited for, because I know you saw the first, like, the Snow White attraction. Are you excited to see the new changes there? Yeah, I am. I'm actually really excited because I love the changes they did for Peter Pan and for Alice. I I think that they did a beautiful job at really meshing and blending the new tech and the projections with the old physical props. I think they did a beautiful job. And I love Alice. The way they did it when you enter in the, the, Mm -hmm. the attraction and then you see like Alice, the proje- like the cartoon, like the projection yeah, that's running really across. Cool. It's just awesome. I mean, it's, just, it's incredible. I, I'm excited for it. I like what they've done so far with the other dark rides. I think they'll do it just as equally a great job with Snow White. And then the next one they're probably going to do is Pinocchio. They're probably going to de-scary, de-scarize oh, that, that ride, that right? Kind of dark, yeah. That's a really, dark that's, one. It's pretty dark, yeah. That's and a dark one. Barely any lights in there. It's like literally and figuratively dark. <laughs> and then you get, and then they, then they put you into that cage, you know, and they lock you in, and it's like yeah. it's a scary ride for kids. I think that's probably gonna be the next one they do. But um, I'm okay with it. I, I'm just glad to see these dark rides getting the love that they deserve and they need. Because really, if they didn't, if they didn't do these changes, if they didn't like you know, change it where it's less scary and they get the, the, the ridership and the numbers they need, then, then, the, then the other alternative would have been that they would have just changed the ride completely. They would have gutted Snow yeah, White. gone the Florida route. Yeah, it would have gone the Florida route or it would have become some new IP. It would have been like a Tangled ride or something. I don't want that. I want these. <laughs> in, I, I love Tangled. Don't get me wrong. I want a Tangled ride, but I don't want it to replace Snow yeah. White. You know, I mean... <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah. I said, I'm happy for it. I love these additions. I love what they did with the other two rides. I'm sure I'll love Snow White and Pinocchio's next, I'm sure. Yeah, it looks really exciting. Also, I like how they brought, they literally brought that scene with Dopey, I think, from the Seven Dwarves Mind Train of him with the jewels in his eyeballs. That's yeah. seen directly from the Mind Train, right? So that's pretty cool little homage to that attraction. Yeah, yeah, it was really cool. They took a lot of the tech from you know the mine train and brought it over to our attraction i think it's really really <laughs> awesome I, i'm i'm happy with it from what i see it looks really cool <laughs> and lastly here disney plus wow they have a lot of 2021 stuff coming what is your most anticipated show or movie coming to disney plus this year mine is wandavision yeah, no, I was just going to say, mine is WandaVision. Like I said earlier in the video, I, I really like Scarlet Witch, the Scarlet Witch character. I, I think Elizabeth Olsen has done a great job portraying that character. Um, she's badass. Um, I'm really excited for that. It looks like a really weird show. Um, I'm very much intrigued. So that's probably my only one. I mean, Kenobi... The Obi Wan Kenobi series, I don't think that doesn't come out this year, right? It comes out, I, don't I think. think like, so. But the yeah. book, uh, book of Boba Fett does. That should be kind of interesting. That'll be interesting. That'll be very interesting. But I still think WandaVision is a little. My excitement level for WandaVision is a little higher than Boba. Mm -hmm. Um, so I would have to go with WandaVision definitely. And I think. Hold on. Oh, and season two of High School Musical. Oh yes, <laughs> coming out. I, I, did you see the holiday I, special? The holiday special was pretty cool. Yeah, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. It was like a sing-along thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's uh, much better than I anticipated. Like, when you told me to watch the first one, I'm like, all right, I'll watch it. And I was like, whoa, I love this. It was great. It's absolutely great. Yeah, the kids in that show are fantastic. And also, Loki is coming out in May of this year, and I'm... Very Ooh. excited. I'm probably just as excited for, about that as WandaVision. So I'm excited for that one. Well, and Loki, I think we touched upon this in our Marvel video like a few mm -hmm. weeks ago. But like Loki surprised me with in the sense that it was like, I thought it was going to be really, really like, like, uh, like more like a comedy. Mm -hmm. the, but from the trailer, at least, it felt more serious. It almost felt like the Joker movie. It was yeah. kind of like this weird, like this really dark, dark movie, uh, and that actually makes me more interested in it. I like, I'm glad it's taking that 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 darker tone. Mm -hmm. um, I'm excited for Loki. The trailer looks freaking dope, and then the score for that trailer. I don't know if that it's the score for the show. Hopefully, it is. Yeah, but the music to really it when they were doing like the Loki logo. Yeah, that, do, 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 it was it, man. It's really good. I can't <laughs> wait. Like 2021. Oh, gosh, an orange grove is right. It can only go up from here. <laughs> yep. Well, thank you for joining on this 2021 optimistic video. And comment below what's your most anticipated thing for 2021. And subscribe to Orange Grove's channel. He's almost at. 3,000. What a yes. big one over here. Thank you. And and subscribe. This guy right here, he's only six subscribers away from 1,000. That's right. Hopefully by the time this comes out, I'll be even closer or there already. But please subscribe anyway. And then, <laughs> yeah, push him over the 1,000 marks. You know, he's worked his, his, his butt off doing this and uh, he deserves every bit of it. And I really am. I'm, I'm, I'm happy for you, Ethan. I really oh, am. Thanks. Um, yes, thanks. And it was because uh, of your help early on with those cool apps and cool, uh, cool editing tools. Perfect video. I still use that to this day. Also, yes. for upcoming. If, if you want to start your own YouTube channel, very easy. I record on my phone most of the time, and I use Perfect Video to edit and Wondershare Filmora to do my voiceover stuff. So pretty easy start 2021 with a new youtube channel anyone can do it it's free <laughs> you know and it's, and, and it's funny i actually just started this is kind of getting into the youtube thing a little bit but i actually just found this site called fiverr have you heard of this even 
I have. I think I tried to sign up or look into that really quick. It's uh, people like it's free. Isn't that the one where freelance people design your stuff? Yes. And I, I actually submitted a couple um, and I'll get them back like in a couple of days, but they do like professional intros. They even do like, so you, you can, you can send them your, your logo and they'll do like a professional intro for your videos. Mm -hmm. But then you can also do voiceover work. So they have a guy who does like movie trailer voices and he can do like a movie trailer voice for your YouTube channel. Oh, that's pretty cool. And, and the guy, I mean, like, and every one of them is like different prices. Some of them charge like five bucks. Some are like 20, some are like 500, but most of them, the vast, vast majority of, of the, of the people that do this, they're like five to $15. They're not that expensive and it's professional quality. So yeah, check it out. I, 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 the jury's still out on it. I'm waiting for mine to come back. It takes like two or three days, but, um, you know, I mean, it's professional. It looks really cool. Uh, and if it, if it looks great, I'll do the voiceover stuff too. Yes, I can't wait. I can't wait to see that uh, attached to your newest video. I'll be like, who's this talking? This is not, <laughs> this is not Orange Grove. <laughs> the intro will be like, and hey, welcome to Orange Grove 55. <laughs> You know, like real, real cinematic, you know? <laughs> that'll be, that'll be, that's pretty cool. But yeah, so look at Fiverr if you're uh, trying to uh, start your own channel this year as well. But if you're in the theme parks, you have Pixar Pier right here. I'm still living here, by the way. I'm, I haven't left in the three, nine months this has been closed. Uh, Disney allows me to live here. I'm I watch World of Color every night. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to watch it with me, subscribe and share this collaboration to everyone you know. And as always, have a fantastic day. Yes.